Welcome to the 8.5 video. In today's video, we're gonna be learning about three new shapes. The first one is a trapezoid. There's actually two different kinds of trapezoids we're gonna learn about. And then we're also gonna learn about kites. You should have noticed on your quadrilateral tree that there's three figures we haven't learned about yet. So this video, we'll learn about the last three figures. We're gonna learn all their different properties and then we'll apply those properties. Ultimately, after this section, you're going to have to be able to differentiate between all the different figures and all their different properties. We are going to start with definitions and properties of the three figures that are listed, a trapezoid, an isosceles trapezoid, and a kite, and then we'll start using them. A trapezoid has only one pair, that's really important, of parallel sides. and those parallel sides are called the bases. Okay, so you should be able to tell then a trapezoid is a completely different figure than a parallelogram. Parallelogram has to have two pairs of parallel sides. A trapezoid has exactly one pair. So a trapezoid does not fall in the parallelogram family. Now, because of this, because there's only one pair of parallel sides, the consecutive non-base angles are supplementary. Okay, so if we draw ourselves a little picture here, trapezoid has one pair of parallel sides and those sides are called the bases. The sides that are not parallel are called the legs. If I then number my angles, the non-base angles, so the angles that are not on the same base, are supplementary. So angle 1 at angle 2 is going to be equal to 180 degrees. Angle 3 at angle 4 is also going to be equal to 180 degrees. Now, that should not be surprising. Angles 1 and 2 are consecutive interior angles. We learned about those all the way back in chapter 3 when we talked about parallel lines and their properties. So angles 1 and 2 are consecutive interior angles. Angles 3 and 4 are consecutive interior angles, which is why they're supplementary. Now, the next figure is an isosceles trapezoid. This is a trapezoid that has some extra properties. The biggest difference, if a trapezoid is an isosceles, its two legs are congruent. The diagonals are also congruent. and the base angles are congruent. It's also important to note that an isosceles trapezoid, because it ha is a trapezoid, it still has all the properties of a trapezoid. So it's kind of like how a rectangle has all the properties of a parallelogram. Isosceles trapezoid has all the properties of a trapezoid and then these extra three. So isosceles trapezoid has five properties altogether. If we draw ourselves a figure again, still has one pair of parallel sides. Again, those are called the bases. The sides that are not parallel are called the legs. Those are the ones that are congruent. The base angles are also congruent. So these angles are going to be congruent, and these angles will be congruent. Okay, last figure we need to talk about is a kite. A kite is not a trapezoid, it's not a parallelogram. It's its own part of the tree, it's its own family. The biggest property that defines a kite is that it has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. That's really important. It's not the opposite sides that are congruent, it's the consecutive sides. So if we draw a figure like this, one pair of consecutive sides congruent and another pair. Again, not opposite, consecutive. Next, we know that the diagonals are perpendicular. 
if we draw in this diagonal, this diagonal, they're going to be perpendicular. We know that one diagonal is bisected. So on our figure, you can probably tell this diagonal looks like it's bisected. And then lastly, one pair of opposite angles are congruent. It's the angles that are connected by that bisected diagonal. So in this case, this angle is congruent to this one. The other pair of opposite angles are not congruent. So, so far with our quadrilaterals, we've learned the parallelogram family, now the trapezoid family, and again, the kite is kind of off on its own. Okay, so let's use these properties now and look at examples one, two, and three. If we look at example number one, first thing I want us to know is what kind of figure is this? First thing that we notice is it has a pair of parallel sides. That makes it a trapezoid. We also notice that the legs are congruent, making this an isosceles trapezoid. I should have mentioned we're finding all the missing angle measures. Okay, so an isosceles trapezoid, we know that the base angles are congruent. So angle F will be congruent to angle G, and J will be congruent to H. So first thing that that tells us is that angle H is 110 degrees. Next, we need to find F and G. We know that they're congruent, but we need to find one of the two. In a trapezoid, the consecutive non-base angles are supplementary. So what that tells us is angle F add with angle J is 180 degrees. Angle F is what we're looking for. Angle J is 110. So we get angle F is 70 degrees. So we know that angle F is 70. Angle G is congruent, so it's also 70. Okay, example two. We have two pairs of congruent sides. They're consecutive, they're not opposite, which tells us that this figure is a kite. One thing we know about kites is there's one pair of opposite angles that are congruent. This 88 will be congruent to the angle across from it. You can tell because it's the angle between the non-congruent sides. So the angles between the non-congruent sides are gonna be congruent. Last angle that we need is angle J. This is a quadrilateral, so its angles are going to add up to 360 degrees. So in this case, we get angle J plus 88 plus 88 plus 120 equals 360. If I add up these three, I get 296. So my angle J then is 64 degrees. Okay, example three. Again, we need to identify what kind of figure this is. Two pairs of congruent sides. They're next to each other though, making this a kite. Okay, one thing we know about kites is there's one pair of opposite angles that are congruent. The angles we have are not congruent, meaning the two that we're missing must be congruent. If I call this angle X, this one will also be X. Now I want you to pause the video and I want you to solve for x. Okay, let's see how we did. You should have gotten that angle x, which is the measure of angle m and also the measure of angle k, is equal to 125 degrees. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm gonna to be making sure that you have that work shown. You need to use the fact that all the angles add up to 360 like we did in example two. If you do not have work for this problem, you will not get credit. Moving on to the next.
Okay, so for example number four, what is the perimeter of R-A-T-S? Before we jump into finding the perimeter, we need to know what kind of figure this is. We notice that we have two pairs of congruent sides. They're not opposite though. They're next to each other, they're consecutive. So this figure is a kite. Now, to find the perimeter, we need all the sides. So we're going to have to find all four sides, add them all up. We do have this piece of information over here, RT is equal to 24. Now pay attention, that's not the side. The side is not 24. RT, which is this right here, is 24. Now one piece of important information that we know about a kite is that one diagonal is bisected. Now the diagonal SA that we have can't be bisected. It has two pieces that are not the same. RT then has to be bisected. It's cut in half. So that 24 is cut to be 12 and 12. Now let's not do extra work here. We know that RA and AT are congruent. We really only need to find one of those sides then. We'll know what the other one is. So let's find AT. Again, RS and ST are congruent. We only need to find one, so let's find this side. I'm going to start by finding X, and then I'll find Y. If I look at this triangle right here, I know it's a right triangle. I know two of the sides. I can find the third side then. Now I have two different options to find X. Option 1 is Pythagorean Theorem. So I can do 12 squared plus 12 squared equals X squared. Option two, right triangle where two sides are the same. It's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So I could do 45, 45, 90, which is L, L, L root two. That's the option I'm gonna go with. So I have 12, 12, 12 root two. That tells me then that X is equal to 12 root two. Next, I'm going to go about finding y. To do that, I'm going to use this triangle on the left. This one is a right triangle. We know two sides. We want to find the third. So you're going to use Pythagorean Theorem. So to find y, we'd have 20 squared add 12 squared equals y squared. So this is 400 add 144 is equal to y squared. So 544 is equal to y squared if we take a square root. Now, unfortunately, that's not a perfect square. We're going to have to break that up. This is 16 times 34, which is 4 times 4, 2 times 17. So I have a pair that goes outside. 2 times 17, which is left over, 34 goes underneath the root. So that y is 4 root 34. Now that tells us that side rs is also 4 root 34. Side ra, which is 12, is also, or side ra, which is congruent to at, x is also 12 root 2. We're not finished yet, we still have to find the perimeter. We get 4 root 34 plus 4 root 34, plus 12 root 2, plus 12 root 2. Now be careful, you are only permitted to add square roots with the same number underneath the root. So these two I can add, they become 8 root 34. These two I can add, they become 24 root 2. I cannot combine those, so do not add them. This is your final answer. That's an exact answer. If I asked you for an approximate, you would put that in your calculator and you would get about 80.59. Okay, so that's for example four. Let's move on to example five, which is another kite problem. Again, calculate the perimeter of the kite. Okay. One thing we know about this kite is that one diagonal is bisected, like any kite. 
So because SU is not bisected, again bisect to cut in half, that means BT is. So that means this little piece is 9. We also have some right angles here, so we're going to have to do some Pythagorean theorem. What I want you to do is pause the video and try this one on your own. You're going to have to do Pythagorean theorem to find two sides because you know that you have two pairs of congruent sides. When you're finished, come back, please. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. I'm going to start by finding this side. So you should have set up Pythagorean theorem. 8 squared add 9 squared equals x squared. x then ends up being the square root of 145, which does not simplify. You should notice, if you look at this triangle on the left, you're going to end up with the same Pythagorean theorem. So that also gives you root 145. If you set up Pythagorean theorem for this triangle on the bottom, which you should have done, you get the square root of 130. I expect to see your work for that. This side will also end up being the square root of 130 because you have two pairs of congruent sides. Your perimeter then, when you add up all those sides, is 2 root 145 add 2 root 130. Again, this is your exact answer. When you plug that in your calculator, that ends up being about 46.89, which is your approximate answer. I expect to see all of the work for this tomorrow. If you do not show the work, you will not get credit. We have one last topic to talk about before we end this video, and it's the mid-segment of a trapezoid. Mid-segment of a trapezoid, by definition, connects the midpoints of the two legs of a trapezoid. Now, remember that the legs are the sides that are not parallel. So when you take the midpoints of the two sides that aren't parallel and you connect them, you get what's called a mid-segment. It has two important properties. The first one is that the mid-segment is parallel to the two bases. The bases are the sides that are parallel themselves. Also, the length of the mid-segment is the average of the bases. Okay, so let's see what this looks like in action. If you look at example number six, how long is segment TS? So if we write an X there. Now, one thing I should have, you should see, they're kind of small as you see these parallel markings. That tells us that we have a trapezoid. What I also want you to notice is M is a midpoint. It has two congruent pieces on either side. R is also a midpoint. It has those two congruent markings on the side. That tells us that RM is a mid-segment. RM, then, will be parallel to the two bases. Its length is also the average of the bases. So that's the part that we're going to need to use. The mid-segment, that 38.5, is the average of the two bases. Now, if you remember average, add up divide by how many there are. If I put this over 1, I can now use the cross product property. I end up with 77 equals x plus 26. 
x then ends up being 51. Now, we put x in the problem, so really it's best if we write ts equals 51. Of course, remember units if you were given units. Okay, more examples to do. If we look at example number seven, I want us to notice we have two parallel sides. That tells us that we have a trapezoid. Remember that this, this property, the mid-segment, applies to any trapezoid, not just an isosceles trapezoid. So this one's not isosceles, but any trapezoid, this mid-segment. We notice again that N and M are mid-segments, or NM is a mid-segment because it connects two midpoints. You are going to need to find X. So our mid-segment, that 2X minus 1, is the average of the two bases. Add them up, divide by 2. I want you to pause the problem and finish this one, please. Okay, coming back, you should have gotten x equals 14. Please make sure you show your work for this. If you don't show work, you will not get credit tomorrow. Okay. I want to know, did we accomplish the objective? Here is your objective problem. You need to have this finished for tomorrow to get full credit. Good luck.